Now the truth of the matter is with Spartan Stadium, I never believed that we were going to put in a portable turf field. I was probably just as surprised as anyone else when we started this. Oh, I think it's fabulous for the reputation of the turf area around the world. Here is our fifth, grain, fifth game today, and you'd hardly know the field was played on. It's not my reputation, it's not the turf's reputation, it's the Michigan State University's reputation. And this is more than a football field. Uh, this, is, this is about Michigan State. And having a field that's really based on the kind of research that we do um, is very gratifying. There's no question it's cutting edge technology, and it is true that Michigan State, from the very beginning, has been a, a land grant school, and in a sense, it's, uh, it pulls everything together. What we have is 4,800 different pieces of, of turf that we have pulled together. Underneath it is a small space of, of area where we can blow air under it, so it, near the end of the season we can keep the grass growing, water goes through it. It's an impressive technological achievement with the turf grass we have here. It is much more complex than simply grass. Well, the World Cup in 1993 and 94 is the, is the precursor to all this. That dome is 430,000 square feet, seating 77,557 inside here for the first ever game indoors. And folks, they have to play it on grass. And a $2 million project directed by Michigan State laid this grass down as you look at it. Okay, it was there that we really introduced the idea of modular turf. Because that situation came and they said, what we need to do is you know, have a, a world-class field inside the Pontiac Silverdome, and the field needs to be guaranteed to be perfect. Everything we did there was unprecedented. So it was a kind of like a two-year research project. So really the idea behind it, the system at the Pontiac Silverdome was to develop a module and a soil system with turf on it growing, actively growing, in which it was outside most of the time under ideal environmental conditions. And then just before you needed them and the games, you could move it in, play your games, and then when that event was over, you could take it back outside, let it rejuvenate, and use it for the next year. This is the last remaining module. It's a hexagon shape, and this weighs about 3,000 pounds full, which really, from a cost standpoint, is almost prohibitive compared to the way they can do it with these high-density plastics. Mm -hmm. And then the plastic module, or the module we're using now, is actually, you know, uh, a square. Harks now gets to the center of the field, tackled from behind. Well, that gained a lot of notoriety for the university. It gained a lot of notoriety for our turf grass program. And this is a temporary field that's only going to be in for you know anywhere from 20 to 60 days inside this particular stadium. We are really years ahead of the curve. Now the truth of the matter is with Spartan Stadium, I never believed that we were going to put in a portable turf field. I was probably just as surprised as anyone else when we started this. I think it was about two years ago in, in September of, of 2000 and I think we had just finished doing a special for ABC News. Here's ABC's Aaron Brown. In a corner of Michigan State University, grass is being stomped on and stomped on some more all in the interest of science and to the delight of Trey Rogers. There's nothing more exciting to me than watching grass grow. I mean, after all, that's my life. It really is. If grass is his life, this is his passion. Rogers helped develop the system that made a grass field at the heavily used Giants Stadium outside of New York City possible. Right after that, athletic director, associate athletic director Greg Iani came out the grass had been discussed um, uh, about you know four or five years ago uh, is when it came up that uh, uh, 
uh, it was becoming a recruiting issue and uh, uh, there was a strong push by uh, the campus community our crop and soil science people that uh, uh, it was time that they developed uh, turf grasses that uh, should be in Spartan Stadium. But uh, what kind of system were we going to use? And Greg saw these modules and he said, I just think I just saw these in Giant Stadium. And uh, you think they'd work in Spartan Stadium? I said, yeah, they could. You know, the next thing I knew, we were on a flight from Lansing to uh, you know, New York City and to see Giant Stadium. And, and the guys that are way up the pole there, the, the bosses, they all liked what they saw. And um, it turned from me thinking that we were gonna put in a really good conventional field that uh, everybody would be really proud of and I thought would work just fine. We turned around all of a sudden, we're putting in this Cadillac modular field and I couldn't be more excited because it's what we've been working on. We knew it would work. And this is the technology that was actually born here at Michigan State University, researched here first at Michigan State University, used and tried here first at Michigan State University. The, the, the soil, the root zone mix that's in that in Spartan Stadium is probably born out of Jason Henderson and Dr. Crum's research from 1997 through 99. We were going to use that soil regardless of what type of system we used. So we challenged Jason with the idea of, okay, so if you are to build an athletic field, whether it be module or whether it be a standard um, construction method, what kind of soil and what kind of properties do you need to look at? He laid out this study very roughly as far as uh, how much silt and clay can you add to a sand to increase stability without uh, severely hindering drainage. And I said, that hit me in the face right there. I said, that's, that's what I want to study. Well, Jason, Jason was a very interesting graduate student. He's still here doing his PhD degree. Uh, but he understands the requirements for American football because he played American football at Penn State University. He was an offensive lineman. He knows what a good athletic field is. He knows what a poor one is. And he's been very instrumental in helping us produce these specifications and requirements. modules were provided by a company called Green Tech. And so all it really meant was once we decided we were going to go with the modular field, we just picked up the phone and said we'd like to place an order of 6,000 boxes. <laughs> well, what we're doing is we are filling the modules that will be the base of the new Spartan football field. They are four by four foot plastic trays and they will be filled with uh, pea stone on the bottom and sand on top. That will be the root zone layer and it, the stadium will hold about 6,000 boxes. Well, our, our students, particularly our undergraduate students and our two-year students were, I mean, they were very excited to be able to be a part of building this modular field for Spartan Stadium. They took their spring break off and they stayed here on campus and worked that entire week of the spring break to help fill the modules. It gives uh, all the students a chance to, part, our turf students, to participate in a project that nobody else is doing right now. And so they get some experience on constructing a football field. And then um, there's some pride in it for the students that they had a part of doing something for the Spartans. I mean, students are particularly innovative. And one of the things that they came up was a specialized shovel. And uh, that shovel, uh, because if you look right there, when they're pouring the gravel into the bottom of the module, there's some ribs there. And it's very difficult to manually get that gravel out or to move it out with just a shovel. We tried all kinds of ways to groom out the stone in the bottom with sticks and spoons. So what they did was they cut some holes in that shovel to actually fit where those ribs were. And the humorous part about it is it's two students that were just fine students that are now in the golf course business. The two guys that developed these is Chuck Bucks and John Knockreiner. And uh, so they called it the butt knocker. And uh, they did a fine job. And, and uh, it, it's gotten a lot of laughs, but it was a great tool. Well, we decided that the best place to, uh, to put all our modules together so that we could grow it and take care of it would be right here at the Turf Center. So we went and built a parking lot on the south end of the Turf Center along Farm Lane. And uh, it's about a three and a half acre piece of blacktop. And it's uh, just a big parking lot. And it was graded so it would have the same slope that we would have in the stadium. 
and then uh, once that's completed we will assemble all the modules together uh, just in the exact same width and length that we're going to have in the stadium. Then once the parking lot was finally finished, then we started actually putting the field together. Now that's kind of like laying, I mean, I've never laid very much tile floor, but they tell me that's what it's like. And uh, it makes sense to me that you kind of start with the center line and start working yourself out. And as long as you stay square, things will work. And uh, so then they just started bringing the modules in and putting them down side by side. And that's when they put the grow-in fence down over, the, over every other module and then filled up to the top of that growing fence. Now that growing fence, in addition to keeping grass from growing together, actually provided a grade stake every four feet. Now once that was filled, then we just kind of started treating it like a regular field. Smoothed it out, put some fertilizer down, prepared it. On top of the sand root zone is where we, we slit seed in, nine varieties of Kentucky bluegrass. And we mix those right here in our facility. And then we, uh, we got a tractor with some from our local dealer, John Deere tractor, with very large flotation tires on it. And we had Brilliant Cedar loaned us a cedar that's used in planting athletic fields. And we drilled the field, or we seeded the field in two different directions. And then we broadcast some seed over the top of that. At a very low rate, similar to what a sod farm would do, so the, the sod, the actual seed as it germinates can, can tiller and fill in. And then covered it with that white germination blanket that's actually used a lot in the tobacco industry to germinate tobacco plants, but it does a great job of germinating grass too. And covered that up and actually was covered on May 26th and removed on, on June, right around the first four or five days of June. June of 2001 is when we first began mowing the field and then the field left in June of 2002. And during that whole time, our job basically was to keep it fertilized, water growing, uh, becoming denser and a more stable turf. We treat it just like it was a playing field inside the stadium, doing all the things that's required to get a dense turf, make it look really good so that when it goes to the stadium, it is uh, first rate, it's the best that it can possibly be, that it's ready to move into the stadium. The first thing we needed to look at is we got together and we discussed what some of the design criteria was for Greg. One of the things was to maintain the sight lines on the field. And with the new tray system being 12 inches deep, uh, required depression of the whole uh, surface of the field uh, to go down 12 inches to accept the, uh, the new turf system. The first uh, construction contract we had uh, started the Monday after the last home game of the 2001 football season. The process of laying in the irrigation system um, was part of the infrastructure process. At first, I don't think anybody believed that we were going to have that type of sophisticated irrigation system where we were actually going to be able to put the pipes underneath the asphalt and, and do what we did. The copper piping was laid certainly before the asphalt because it had to be underneath the asphalt and it was laid a foot under the asphalt and under the crushed stone. Um, each location where there was going to be a valve box that was very carefully um, measured and staked out so that um, each connection where the sprinkler heads were going to be would uh, match up with one of the spaces that are in the uh, trays because that irrigation head had to come up in one of those channels for those open footprints of that module, and we had eight inches to play with. When it came time to move, I mean, we, we picked a week out, and the week was the uh, ideal for us because there was no students, and so we could move up and down through campus, and we decided to use the university farm wagons. And we used those wagons, and a lot of people wondered why we did that. I mean, first of all, it allowed us to have MSU people working on it, which we loved and they loved. They loved being a part of this. And, but the other thing was is that by having them on those wagons, we didn't have to tarp them. Had they been on a, uh, just a Ford regular flatbed truck, we'd have to put a tarp on them. There'd have been a weight limit, but there was no weight limit for these tractors. And so we said, we'll, we'll go with that. So they ended up going into the stadium, came in about anywhere from 